first of all, actually, I should say this. We have uh, Marcus Ginyard joining the show in the next break, which is appropriate for what we're going to talk about with North Carolina to start the show. Uh, Marcus Ginyard, a, a national champion at North Carolina, also an all-defensive selection for the ACC. And guess where I think that the, the success for UNC tonight starts? All defensive. The defensive side of the court. North Carolina. I tried to like deconstruct North Carolina. What I mean by that is um, there have been multiple stretches at times this year where they've looked like one of the two or three most likely teams to win the national championship, right? They're a one seed. That makes sense. But I started looking at – they had a 10-game win streak. What did they look like during that 10-game win streak? The two games against Duke where they looked like one of the best teams in the country. What did they look like in those games? Early in the ACC tournament, what did they look like in those games? And in those stretches, they all have one thing in common. It started on the defensive end. Now, that's fascinating going into a game against Alabama because Alabama is a team that, uh, well, they're built kind of exactly the not, not that way. Uh, defense optional. <laughs> defense optional. They're a, a Big 12 football team from like 2007. <laughs> they're just like, we're going to put up 55, and if you put up 56, congratulations. Yeah, cool. <laughs> like That's kind of what Alabama is. They're ranked in the mid-200s in, in most defensive uh, analytics, and they're near the top of the country in most offensive analytics. Alabama can probably match North Carolina in offensive firepower. That's, that's not – I mean, UNC is no slouch on offense, but Alabama is neither a slouch on offense. They can probably match. What they cannot match is UNC's defensive ability when UNC is playing like they're one of the best teams in the country. R.J. Davis and 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 Sears, those are going to be the two offensive uh, you know, soup, uh, the main, main courses, right? We had the soup du jour, now we're going main course. They're going to be the two offensive main courses in this one. How does the other team try to take that away? Well, let's hear from uh, one of those two guys, R.J. Davis, ACC Player of the Year, Naismith Award finalist, All-American for the Tar Heels on what he sees on the other side in Sears. Yeah, I mean, I think it's a really good matchup, both All-American guards, and I have a lot of respect for his game. Um, just the way he orchestrates the offense, he's able to get to his spot, um, does a good job of kind of just setting his man up, using ball screens, and uh, he's the head of the snake, so... Uh, I think it's going to be a good matchup from both sides, from my end and his end. Um, and they put him a lot of good actions for him to be great and for him to find shots for himself or his, for his teammates. So um, I'm looking forward to it. And I think, you know, it's going to be uh, not just a matchup game, but a whole uh, team environment game where it's not just me versus Mark Spears, it's UNC versus Alabama. You could literally just replace Spears with Davis and pretend an Alabama player said it. Pretty much. Right, head of the snake, gonna gonna create. They run him off a lot of motions. Gonna create for himself or his teammates. It's it's those two guys on the perimeter are the head of the snake. But I want to emphasize the head of the offensive snake. If you make Alabama work on offense, if you make them work at what they've they've found easy this year, right? The thing that they have more fun doing, the thing that they're better at. I have a, a strong opinion they're gonna have nothing left to give you on defense. Right, if you make them work on the offensive end, then you look at the other end and it's like, oh, look at this. They're not closing out aggressively on Cormac Ryan. And if you give that guy time and space, he'll knock down a jumper. Oh, look, they're they're wearing down when Armando Baycott has his back to the basket. And if you give that guy a strength advantage on, on the on the block, you're gonna like the results. Oh, look, they're not as aggressive chasing R.J. Davis over screens or under screens or switching or communicating. If you make them work when Alabama has the ball, even if they're scoring, if you make them earn every bucket, I think the other end is going to be where, where UNC can pull away. Hubert Davis, obviously the head coach, on what their identity has been all year. We've got to get after it on the defensive end, and all year consistently, we, we've been a really good defensive team. Uh, we've got to rebound the basketball. Prior to Michigan State in our last game, we had out rebounded um, our opponent 25 straight games, and so we got to get back to that. We got to dominate the boards, and then taking care of the basketball on the offensive end, and and and, and really that's two parts. One, obviously, limiting turnovers, but two. Our shot selection has to be good. And I've always felt that, you know, your defense is really dictated by how you perform on the offensive end. And if you're 
making shots, taking good shots, getting to the free throw line and taking care of the basketball. Um, your opponent's always going up against your set defense, and that's good news for us and bad news for whomever we play. I don't think it's a, any kind of coincidence that he started talking defense. He eventually got to shot selection and some other things that are that are maybe more offensive focused, but he started with rebounding and defense. This is one of those games where you know the the like, you know the offenses are going to show up, right? You know everyone's going to be excited when they have the ball. It's not. It's the Sweet Sixteen. All eyes on you. It's the Sweet Sixteen. You score thirty in a Sweet Sixteen game, you can dine off that for the rest of your life. Right, every time you're back in Chapel Hill, every time you're back in Tuscaloosa, you're hey, remember that game? Remember that time? Remember that Sweet Sixteen? You don't have to motivate guys to play offense in this game. These two teams know what they're doing on that on that side of the court. Uh, but UNC, I believe, the difference between the one seed and the four seed, the difference between a national title contender and a team that's just trying to get hot, is UNC on the defensive side. You want a side note for this one? That's pretty fun. Do you know what happened the last time Cormac Ryan played Alabama in an NCAA tournament game? It was the year 2022. It was the NCAA tournament. Cormac Ryan was on the 11th seeded Notre Dame Fighting Irish. Alabama, 6th seed. It was a first round game. 29 points for Cormac Ryan. 10 of 13 shooting, 7 of 9 for 3. You want to know the real crazy part? This was in 2022 when he was on Notre Dame. He was a 23-year-old college senior at the time. <laughs> now he's a 25-year-old college senior. Yep, it was it was the, the year off. There was COVID. It was a whole thing. Yeah. But uh, but Cormac Ryan is somebody. You know, I'm not saying that that really matters. Uh, other than than a few of some familiar faces on the sideline, there's not going to be like a direct one to one. But it does just go to show you that that you know. There's this big three for Carolina that we talk about, Armando Baycott, R.J. Davis, and I put Harrison Ingram in there. Um, but there's this, this you know, Cormac Ryan could be the difference. Seth Trimble could be the difference. Elliot Cadeau could be the difference if they end up having one of those nights. And, and Cormac Ryan has had a few of them this year, and he's had a few of them in his career, including sending Alabama home from the NCAA tournament. I'm sure he'd love to be like, you know, like an, an old school, remember me? as he knocks down another three, would be a uh, an appropriate measure there. 